a narrow corridor once decided the fate of everyone alive today. For years, the story of how humans first left Africa sparked controversy and wonder in equal measure. Fossil clues from Jebel Faya and mitochondrial DNA from ancient bones led researchers down winding paths. In the last 20 years, ancient DNA has changed everything, revealing hidden branches and dead ends from over 50,000 years ago. Yet the exact way our kind traveled out is still debated and full of twists. These new findings are now forcing us to redraw the map of human beginnings. Come see how a chain of real places and silent genes brings the biggest journey in history to life. Jebel Irhud in Morocco places an early face on our story at 315,000 years ago. Brow ridges softening, brain case reshaping toward a form we would recognize. Further east along the rift, Omo Kaibish in Ethiopia preserves a Homo sapiens skeleton from around 195,000 years ago, and the hair toe remains on the middle awash date to about 160,000 years ago. Across these sites, Middle Stone Age toolkits and Levelois cores show deliberate planning, the technological backbone of a species learning to thrive in shifting climates. Along Africa's southern and northern coasts, evidence of symbolism and social breadth grows. Blombos Cave in South Africa holds carved ochre and shell beads around 100,000 years ago, clues to networks and identity. Pulses of a green Sahara opened and closed with monsoons between about 130,000 and 110,000 years ago, and again after 50,000 years ago, laying temporary grassland corridors across what is now desert. Rivers and lakes that no longer exist stitch together water and game, drawing people toward the continent's northern margins. Those margins narrowed the choices. Between dunes, mountains, and seas, any path outward would channel through a slim gateway. The Levantine Corridor by way of the Nile and Sinai, or the Strait at Bab el Mandeb into Arabia. The question of which door mattered most sets up the riddle of how crossing out actually happened. As climate shifted again, the Levant saw human footsteps. At school in Kafse in Israel, burials and tools between roughly 120,000 and 90,000 years ago show Homo sapiens established north of Africa. Many researchers argue these were early expansions that later retracted when dry spells returned, leaving fossils but limited descendants. Farther south, the Arabian Peninsula offers another thread. At Jebel Faya in the United Arab Emirates, stone assemblages around 125,000 years ago echo Middle Stone Age methods. In Oman's Dofar, a Nubian complex toolkit around 106,000 years ago looks linked to Northeast Africa. And at Al Wusta in Saudi Arabia, a human finger bone around 90,000 years ago sits beside lakeshore fauna snapshots of greener windows when dunes gave way to wetlands. These episodes suggest people repeatedly probed Arabia when rainfall returned. At the Horn of Africa, the Red Sea narrows toward Bab el Mandeb. During lower sea levels after 70,000 years ago, the crossing would still require watercraft, but spanned only a few kilometers in places. Whether most people moved through the Sinai or slipped across this strait remains debated and the answer now leans on what silent DNA can tell us. A femur pulled from riverbank gravels at Ustishim in Siberia dates to about 45,000 years ago. Its ancient DNA carries long Neanderthal segments, pointing to an admixture event around 60,000 years ago, soon after modern humans left Africa. Genomes from early Eurasia consistently trace back to a severe bottleneck between 60,000 and 50,000 years ago, a signature of a primary dispersal that founded most non-African lineages. Mitochondrial reconstructions place the ancestors of haplogroups M and N, the two branches that dominate outside Africa, on a stem that left after 60,000 years ago. By contrast, the people at school in Kavze appear to have left little genetic legacy to living populations, suggesting an early wave that did not persist when climate swung back to aridity. Many researchers argue that repeated expansions occurred, but only one major wave seeded today's diversity. Other ancient genomes show how complicated the first steps were. 
Oase I in Romania, about 40,000 years ago, carried a Neanderthal ancestor only four to six generations back, yet has no clear descendants today. At Bacokiro in Bulgaria, individuals around 45,000 years ago testify to an initial upper Paleolithic presence. The pattern points to pulses and dead ends, nudging us to look again at the corridor through Arabia and the Gulf. When sea levels fell, the floor of today's Persian Gulf emerged as a broad plain, a potential refugium with rivers and marshes during low stands between about 70,000 and 14,000 years ago. Archaeology around its rim hints at people exploiting these windows. Jebel Faya to the north and sites along ancient lakes like Al Wusta to the west frame a greener Arabia at times, a staging ground rather than a barrier. Eastward along the Indian Ocean Rim, stone tools at Jwalapuram in India straddle the Toba ash layer dated to around 74,000 years ago, with evidence many interpret as continuity across the eruption. Farther south, Sri Lanka's Fahi and Lina cave preserves Homo sapiens by roughly 48,000 years ago, showing rainforest hunting and flexible diets. These stops read like footprints along a literal highway. Crossing Wallacea, people reached Sahel, the joined lands of Australia and New Guinea, by at least 50,000 years ago, and many researchers argue for earlier dates around 65,000 years ago at Majid Bebe. Genomes from Papuan and Australian populations today carry some of the highest Denisovan ancestry, consistent with a southern sweep that met older cousins en route. Those encounters changed us, and they frame the next turn in the map. In the Altai, Denisova Cave yielded a small bone from around 90,000 years ago that belonged to a young woman with a Neanderthal mother and a Denisovan father, a first-generation hybrid known to researchers as Denny. Her genome makes contact tangible, not theoretical, and shows these lineages shared landscapes for long stretches. For our species, the first major exchange with Neanderthals likely happened around 60,000 years ago leaving about 2% Neanderthal DNA in most people outside Africa today. Later encounters left sharper signatures. Oase 1 in Romania, at roughly 40,000 years ago, carried a very recent Neanderthal ancestor, while individuals from Bacokaro, about 45,000 years ago, also show fresh admixture. In the east, Denisovan ancestry rises, reaching 4 or 5% in Papuan and some Australian groups, with smaller traces in parts of East Asia. Where did these meetings unfold? Many researchers point to the Levant or Northern Arabia for early Neanderthal contact and to Southeast Asia for Denisovan exchanges. Ancient DNA times the windows, archeology span marks the crossroads. Together they press us to redraw not just who was where, but which routes stayed open long enough to carry families onward. Set against dunes, deltas, and a shifting sea, the combined record of bones, tools, and genomes converges on a main dispersal between 60,000 and 50,000 years ago. Initial Upper Paleolithic traces ripple quickly across Eurasia after 47,000 years ago, at Bacokiro in the Balkans and through Levantine sequences like Sarakil, while genetic bottlenecks and shared Neanderthal segments tie these peoples to a single recent source. At the same time, archaeology in Arabia and the Levant shows earlier windows. Skul and Kafsi between 120,000 and 90,000 years ago, Jebel Faya around 125,000 years ago, and Al Wusta about 90,000 years ago reveal repeated attempts when climate softened. Many researchers argue that the decisive path was a narrow one, through the Sinai Levant corridor or across Babel Mandeb, opened and closed by rainfall and sea level with the Persian Gulf Basin serving at times as a refuge and launch pad. Ancient DNA does not pick a single road on a map, but it weighs the traffic. It points to one successful wave after 60,000 years ago, layered over by local contacts with Neanderthals and Denisovans and by regional adaptations that followed. The outline is clear, the bends are still debated. With each new genome and site, the route sharpens and the journey out becomes a story we can trace from threshold to world.